What's going on guys? Geosnow right here. So in today's video we have the update of this week about jailbreaking. We're going to discuss about everything that is new and everything that remained consistent and also the changes. So let's get straight into that. And I'm going to start by clarifying the Pangu related thing for those who are curious. Now there were rumors around the fact that Pangu jailbreak team might release a jailbreak for iOS 10.3.1 that they have uh, demoed in a, a couple weeks ago, after iOS 10.3.2 will be released. Th those rumors were on uh, Chinese forums, but unfortunately they came out to be not true. And as you can see, iOS 10.3.2 was released quite a while back and Pangu did not release yet. Now, this is something normal for Pangu to not make any public announcements, to remain in a stealth mode, because this is how they operate in general. And they usually do not use Twitter, they usually do not use social media to, you know, uh, promote what they're doing, what they're finding, and so on. They're just either present at conferences, as they did when uh, when they uh, demoed the jailbreak at Janus conference a couple weeks ago, or they simply release it on their website. So, uh, unfortunately, nothing new about Pangu yet, but we do have a couple of good news that arised this week. And um, if you do not know this guy in here with the handle Chronic, his name is Will, then you're probably a little bit too young. Uh, and I'm going to try to explain this in here. But basically, he's been asked by Unix uh, Design, quote, Chronic, will the Chronic dev team ever return to public iOS jailbreaks? On which Chronic replays in the future, not yet. So we do have um, the Chronic dev team probably planning to go back to the public jailbreaks in the future. Now, do not get overhyped on this. It's just some great news that I wanted to mention, but it's definitely not meaning anything for the moment. Uh, the future can be years or can be thousands of years. I do not know. Now, let's just not over exaggerate. But anyways, it's definitely not tomorrow or next month. It's future, which nobody knows what means. So. Um, for those of you who do not know what Chronic Dev team is, well, they've been releasing jailbreaks in the past on the uh, Limerain devices when the Limerain exploit has been a thing. And uh, some of their members are in here, the official members, Dustin Owet, Jay Walker, Semaphore, probably you know Semaphore for, for his tool uh, called Tiny Umbrella or Firmer Umbrella, which was a tool that, um, that could save the blobs the SH, SH blobs and also can uh, push them to Cydia, get them from Cydia and so on. It was a very popular tool back in the days and uh, very useful indeed. It still exists, but it doesn't serve a very big of a purpose nowadays. Anyways, they've been releasing the Green Pyogen Jailbreak, the Gen Pass, and also the iRecovery project. There you can, you can find them online right now, but again, they do not serve a uh, purpose anymore for the newer devices. Anyways, the former members are again very known. Uh, you have uh, Posix Ninja, you have Pod 2G, you have Chronic, you have uh, Geohut as associates, Muscle Nerd. All of them are uh, Soric, indeed. All of them are, of course, very known hackers from um, from back in the days. Um, iOS 7, iOS 6, iOS 4, and so on. That that's the period. I and even uh, even lower than iOS 4, iOS 3, 2, and 1. So uh, definitely a very old uh, jailbreak team, and this guy in here is of course one of the former members. And he has uh, he says that in the future the Chronic Dev team might have plans to go back to iOS public jailbreaking. This is definitely good news, and let's hope they're going to to keep on it. Uh, in another news, we have the extra recipe. I've been talking um, about this extra recipe thing in um, in the past videos, and it's definitely a replacement for the iPhone 7 Mac portal thing. And um, it is basically a jailbreak for the iOS 10.1.1 based on Jan Beer's code and also on QWERTY Worry App's code. And it was developed by Xerob. And as I said, it's much more stable, much better, but it's currently in beta. So um, it's in beta 3 and I definitely do not recommend messing around with it until look at the desktop says it's completely usable. Well, it is usable at this point in beta 3, but if you don't want to risk anything, you should definitely wait for more updates. Then uh, you have the fork created for this by IJPJ. Now, I know I'm, I'm not supposed to talk about this. I will get Luca Tedesco pissed, uh, pissed off because uh, he doesn't really like IJPJ nor his fork of the jailbreak. But anyways, this is a uh, good fork created by IJPJ, which contains a couple of patches. Anyways, Xerob is not okay with this patch, although the community have tested the, uh, the Yalu fork of iJapija or of course the um, 
extra recipe fork and they confirmed it is currently working. Um, Zero Up recommends not to use it due to the fact that it might interfere with uh, with the next updates of extra recipe and get things broken. So definitely stick with the original things. But if you really want to try this out and if you really come across it because it becomes a little bit popular lately, then you should probably know it is definitely not containing malware. It is definitely working, but it's not recommended nor by Zero Up, neither by uh, QWERTY Worry Up. And uh, on the last thing I wanted to mention, it's something that I mentioned this week in a special video, but I just wanted to include it in here. Um, I have asked this uh, guy in here, Adam Donantil, you probably know him, he uh, he said he's going to release an exploit for iOS 10.3.1, 10.2 and so on in the summer for 64-bit, I suppose. And uh, I have asked him if he is going to... if he is going to do it for 32-bit device. Uh, no, I asked him if it's if it's compatible with 32-bit devices or if it can be adapted to 32-bit devices. And he said that, uh, yes, it can, it can be adapted to 32-bit devices, but it's not compatible by default. Uh, which means it's definitely going to be good if a hacker wants to, to get into this and take the exploit that Adam Donofield is going to push and make it for the 32-bit um, devices, which, which is ARM v7, then it's definitely possible. So as you can see here, I asked him, any idea should your exploit be adaptable for 32-bit uh, ARM v7? And he says it definitely is, but it has been written essentially for R64. And he says that I can think of a one small obstacle regarding the info leak I used in the kernel base, though not impossible to overcome. So uh, definitely means that 32-bit devices might still have a chance for this. Don't get overhyped though, because we do not know if somebody will take that exploit and try to adapt it in the summer. We're going to see. But uh, anyways, this is what's happening currently in the jailbreak community. You have the um, you have the Pangu jailbreak that has been demoed but hasn't been released yet, and we do not know if it is going to be released. You have the extra recipe, which is for iPhone 7, a replacement for the Mac portal, which aims to be a little bit more stable. And then you have iJPJS fork that is not recommended but is working. And of course, the uh, announcement made by uh, Chronic that he said he might, uh, well, the Chronic dev team might get back into the public jailbreak releases in the future. So definitely good news, although the Pangu not releasing yet is not that a good news. Anyways, to stay updated, do not forget to subscribe and click the like button if you like this video. If you don't, click the dislike button. Tell me in the comment section down below what iOS version you're using currently and whether you are jailbroken or not, and peace out.